I am a horrible person. I am definitely going to pester my poor pet again at this rate. So a Marvelous Games and Exceed, the publishers of Story of Seasons and Rune Factory, have officially picked up this upcoming supernatural farming sim, which we all didn't realize we needed in our lives. Magical farming and decorating meets eternal love with vampires, witches and werewolves. Definitely count me in. the town of Moonlight Peaks, we get to experience life as a vampire and child of Count Dracula. Our goal is to prove to our father that a fulfilling life full of compassion is possible, even for a supernatural being. We can become friends with local werewolves, witches and mermaids and hopefully we will find our eternal love in the supernatural dating scene. We get to cultivate cursed crops and flowers and use our vampire abilities, spells and potion brewing to excel at farming and also to simply impress everyone with our super cool shapeshifting powers. With a wide range of character customization options and fancy gothic home decor, it is guaranteed that we will be able to live our very own vampire life to the fullest. And it simply looks gorgeous, with its enchanting purple hue under the moonlight. Is it just me, or do these visuals look incredibly reminiscent of Animal Crossing? Especially the trees and the house models. <laughs> They also speak a similar kind of gibberish language, which I find very charming. I really wish we could play this game right now, but unfortunately, Moonlight Peaks is set to release in 2026. While that's a very long time until then, they did release a brand new demo on Steam. So I went ahead and got my first taste of the game. Let's check it out. Right at the start, we get to choose our character. Don't worry, it is a bit limited in the demo, but the devs are promising a wider range of options. So if you imagine a different kind of character, like a masculine one, it will be added. Also, we get to see our little cat mascot, Hell Kitten, for the very first time. I find it super adorable, and I stopped to keep interacting with it throughout the day multiple times. Interestingly, we start our day around 4 p.m. in the evening, instead of at 6 a.m. in the morning as it is in regular farming sims. And of course, it makes sense since we are creatures of the night, vampires, and I already really love this little change of pace. In our menu, we get a first glimpse into the magic going on in this game, which had me very pleased. For example, we've got spells for different farming occasions. Aquaflow for watering up to 16 crops at once, Maturiato to instantly mature our crops, Arbor Levitant to relocate trees, and Repletio to refill our watering can. And it seems like each spell will consume different amounts of mana points, but there is no need to worry as we will get to replenish these points with self-brewed potions too. The very first questline we have in our mailbox is a farming fest quest that asks us to collect wood, stones and fiber, as expected of a tutorial. But of course, instead of doing what I am supposed to, I first got myself distracted and checked out my tool wheel and the crafting bench. I really want to stop all the comparisons, but you know, the controls seemed very familiar and intuitive to me, which was a really pleasant experience using my controller. Also, there were already a whole bunch of furniture and decorative items to craft, very beautiful and gothic style, some more rustic and flowery, with a lot of elements to give our farm a more personality and charm, such as elegant flower hedges and planters. And instead of doing the most obvious and using my net to catch some of the butterflies, I figured out you can actually catch lost souls with it too. That will be very interesting to see what we get to do with all of these collected souls. I am feeling pretty powerful at this point already. While digging at these little swirling points on the ground, I found a scattered notes around the farm that revealed little bits about Moonlight Peak's lore, and I am already excited to find out more. I also discovered that we can be in possession of a chicken coop and some... No, not chickens, chickens in this game. Which look adorably supernatural, just like the pig oats do. 
For now, it seems like I only got to pet them for a bit, but I'm guessing we will get to interact with pets and animals more in the full game. We also have a magic shop that not only sells some decorations so that we don't need to craft them ourselves, but we also get a little insight into the range of seeds and crops we will get to grow. I didn't expect to see such interesting crops as nightshade, mandrakes, wolfsbane, googly and garlic, ginger and lavender for example, but I am already loving the fresh variety of plants and flowers that the game is offering us. So I went ahead and planted my very first mandrake plants. And of course, I had to get a little taste of magic too. So I first cast a spell that refilled my watering can, and then I cast another spell that made my watering can work completely on its own, which was super satisfying to watch. I also tried out my first shapeshifting form as a bat, because apparently there are multiple slots for other creatures in the future, and I am really excited to see them. For now, as a bat, I could fly around super fast, and even fly over smaller obstacles such as stones, wood, or barricades like fences. Super convenient. And I am guessing that other shapeshifting forms will give us other advantages to work with. The next day, I tried watering my mandrakes the old-fashioned way with my watering can, and I was very pleased with the smooth controls that allowed me to freely walk around while doing so. And yeah, I am a horrible person. But this animation of my cat running away from the water and licking its paws was such an adorable detail. I am definitely going to pester my poor pet again at this rate. Now that I had collected a few items on my very first day, I figured out how to decorate my farm. And oh boy, I had so much fun with it. Not only could I place furniture items, but it was even possible to relocate and replant flowers that I had picked up the day before. No digging holes or planting flower seeds beforehand, and I loved it. Lastly, the ambient sounds and the crunchy footsteps are absolutely mesmerizing in this game and have a great ASMR relaxation potential. Alongside the clean 3D furniture, character models, and animated 2D portraits, the entire audiovisual presentation simply blew me away in an instant. But that wraps up my very first impressions of the Moonlight Peaks demo. If you'd like to see more, please let me know by leaving a like, subscribing, and maybe saying hi in the comments. This way, I will know that you are just as excited to see more of the game as I am. So have a lovely day, my friends, and see you in the next video.